Manchester United approach Wolves manager Gary O'Neill, summer striker shortlist revealed, and an update on Malasia. These are just some of the stories we will be discussing on the show this morning. But before we jump into that, please smash a like on today's video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's get straight on into it. As always, I like to start the show off with some positivity, and that is about Kobe Mainu. So for anybody who missed the game last night, England played Belgium, and Kobe Mainu made his first full England debut starting from the beginning of the game. And he got man of the match. Honestly, he was unbelievable. I watched it. As I said to you on the on the, the show last night, I don't really watch England that much because I just think it's boring. It, international football is really boring for me, but I had to watch it. I knew Kobe Mania was going to start and I thought I've got to go and watch it. And I'm glad I did because he was honestly incredible. He was immense for an 18 year old at his debut, his full England debut. He was only meant to be in the under 21s and then he got promoted straight to the first team. He was absolutely incredible. Um, so massive shouts to Kobe Mainu. Really, really happy for him. And I'm so happy that he's a Manchester United player. Uh, Jude Bellingham was talking after the game as well about Kobe Mainu. So I thought I'd bring that into the show. Uh, Jude Bellingham said the following. He says, I sound like an old guy, but I know how hard it is when there's a clamour of people are putting a lot of pressure on you and Kobe has been great. Um, if Antonio also talked about him and said that uh, at the age of 18, if Antonio was apparently just playing his Xbox. So... <laughs> I thought that was quite funny. He he was obviously saying that, you know, to be to be at this stage of his career at the age of 18 is absolutely incredible. To be to be starting for England at Wembley and getting man of the match. Now, I know it's just a friendly and all the rest of it, but still, I would be very surprised if Kobe Mainu isn't on that flight to the Euros this coming summer now, because he he is honestly absolutely revitalised that, that England midfield. But anyway, this isn't an England channel. This is a Manchester United channel. I just wanted to bring in a bit of positivity as I always like to try and start each show off with. So yeah, big ups to Kobe Mainu. So happy for you. And I can't wait to see you continuing to play like this for Manchester United. Um, let's move on to the next story though. Let's talk about summer strikers then, because we know for a fact that Manchester United are going to try and sign a new striker this summer. Is, is one of the priority positions. We spoke about the priority positions last night, but for anybody who missed that show, I will repeat for you. So various different sources are saying that the priority positions this summer are a left back, a centre back, a centre defensive midfielder and a striker. I agree with all of that. Those four positions need to be filled as a minimum. Obviously, if other people leave, then we might bring in others, but a left back, we've not had Luke Shaw or Malasir all season, really. Uh, centre back, Johnny Evans will leave. Harry Maguire could leave, you know, Lindelof should probably leave. Iran could go to Saudi. You know, there could be two to four players in that centre-back position who leave this summer. So we desperately need a new centre-back, regardless of whether they leave, really, in my opinion. We desperately need a new centre-back. Um, and then obviously in the striker position, we've only got one striker. Anthony Martial has been injured all season and his contract expires in two months. So he'll be gone. And then we will literally just have Rasmus Hoyland and no one else. I know Marcus Rashford has played as a striker, but... I don't think he's as effective as a striker as he is on the wing. So we don't really want to mess with that. If, you know, if Rashford is going to stay at the club, he should be a left winger. So moving on to the players we are currently looking at. So um, this is where I want you guys to get involved in the show. These are the three players that we're at the moment the most heavily linked to. So the first one is Benjamin Sesko, obviously at Red Bull Leipzig. Um, I like him. He's young. I think he would be very, very good alongside Rasmus Hoyland and to kind of battle it out with Rasmus Hoyland. Uh, the other's Evan Ferguson. And the final one is Joshua Xerxes. So the story that's coming out this morning is saying that apparently Sesco and Xerxes will be available for somewhere under £50 million. That sounds about right to me. But Evan Ferguson's going to cost upwards of £80 million. Now, what I want to ask you guys today, who would you go for out of those three players? Let me know in the comments section. You've got Benjamin Sesko, Joshua Xerxes, or Evan Ferguson. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'll bring you some of their stats as well so you have a little bit more kind of background information to, to base your decision on. And obviously then I'll give you my opinion as well. So Joshua Xerxes, 22 years of age. He's got 10 goals and four assists in 27 games in the Serie A this season. So he's averaging a goal or an assist every other game at the moment in, in the, the Serie A. Not a bad return. I think that's more than what Rasmus Hoyland got last season in the Serie A. So based on that, I think, you know, that's quite decent. Rasmus Hoyland's done well for us so far, I think. Um, so that's that's Joshua Xerxes, option number one. Obviously, he's Dutch as well. So if Eric Ten Hag is to remain as the manager, we know that he likes the Dutch players. Uh, on the flip side of that, you have got 
Benjamin Sesko, 20 years of age, so a couple of years younger. He has got seven goals and two assists in 23 games in the Bundesliga this season. So around about the same return, nearly a goal or an assist every other game. Obviously, he was in the Champions League as well. He got two goals in the Champions League this season. So, you know, he's doing well. Obviously, he's in the, the Slovenia national team as well. Um, so those are the kind of two cheaper options, if you like. They will cost us under 50 million. Now, the more expensive option, which I think will probably be the most popular one with with this with this you know community, is um, Evan Ferguson. Nineteen years of age, had a really really good season last year. Had an incredible season, in fact. This season's been a little bit slower, I would say. Um, he's got six goals in twenty six games, or six goals across all competitions. Uh, obviously, they've been in the Europa League this season, Brighton. So he's only got six goals across thirty five games in all competitions, which What's that? A goal every six games? I mean, it's difficult because he's 19 and he could keep getting better and better. But a goal every six games isn't really that good, is it? Being completely honest, it's not. Uh, um, and maybe, I don't know, I, I think for £80 million, I think maybe that's a little bit steep. I know if he goes on to the player to become the player we're all expecting him to become, then £80 million would be a fair price. But... I think six goals in 35 games for a Brighton team who play good attacking football, that's not that good, is it, really? Like, I, I don't think anyway. Uh, I still think he's a quality player. I just think £80 million for that is is a lot. Now, some people would argue, well, we paid about that kind of money for Rasmus Hoyland last season and he has a similar goal tally. Maybe that's just how much those types of strikers cost now. But the point I'm trying to make here is you've got Benjamin Sesko and um, Joshua Zerksey both of which are around the same age as Evan Ferguson, have been quite prolific in the last couple of years, you know, getting decent stats over the over the last kind of two or three seasons. It's, it's a difficult one. I think for me personally, Evan Ferguson would be an incredible signing. I just think that £80 million plus is maybe a little bit steep for us in this current window because if we don't get Champions League football, that's going to really, really affect our, our budget going into the summer. So spending £40 million on a striker for someone like Xerxy or um, Benjamin Sesko is probably makes a little bit more sense because for the price of Evan Ferguson, you could go and get yourself a Joshua Xerxy or a Benjamin Sesko plus another player, like a centre-back. You could probably get Todibo and Sesko for the same amount of money that Evan Ferguson's going to cost. If we had an unlimited budget and there was no financial issues, I'd probably say, yeah, Evan Ferguson, great. But obviously that isn't the case. Financial fair play is incredibly difficult to get around at the moment so based on that I think we do need to be looking at the kind of cheaper options at the moment personally um, and there's no reason why in the future we can't come back and try and get Evan Ferguson because he at the end of the day he's almost on trial at Brighton you know he might either turn into a world-class striker or he might not and it is Manchester United taking a massive gamble if we go and give them 80 million pounds we've seen Moises Caicedo go for what 110 million pounds um and has he lived up to his expectations of the money that Chelsea paid to Brighton? I don't think so. Could this be another instant where Brighton charge ridiculous amounts of money for a player and then the player doesn't live up to what we all hope? It's possible. And I just think that Manchester United are in a very precarious situation at the moment and we've got to be very careful about how we spend our money because we're in a difficult situation. So that's my take on it anyway. But as always, I want you guys to let me know in the comment section, who would you like Manchester United to sign as the striker this summer? Let me know. Martial's going... 100%. Uh, Hoyland will be our only striker. So Man United will sign a striker this summer. So let me know in the comments section who you would like to sign. Um, right, let's move over to this story about Gary O'Neill. Like, this one's caught me by surprise a little bit. So this story came out late last night and the headline is this. Manchester United are speaking to Wolves manager Gary O'Neill about a role in a potential new coaching setup at Old Trafford. It says O'Neill has been uh, made aware of United's interest with senior figures from the club expressing a desire to discuss his intentions. Now, this story came out last night and as you can imagine, Twitter went into an absolute meltdown. People saying, why the hell would we bring in Gary O'Neill as the manager? Now, the clarity I can give you this morning is that Gary O'Neill is not being looked at as a replacement for Eric Ten Hag. He's being looked at as being part of the coaching setup. So he could be the assistant manager because a lot of Eric Ten Hag's staff, I believe, um, are out of contract this summer. And the, the headline this morning from quite a few reputable journalists is that Ineos are apparently assessing 
the coaching team around Eric Ten Hag. Obviously, we know that the set piece coach left and went to the MLS. I don't think we, he was very good personally. You've got Darren Fletcher, you've got Steve McLaren, you've got um, Mitchell van der Gaag. I personally think that our coaching setup could be improved massively. Um, like the people around Eric Ten Hag, I don't really think are that good personally. The set piece coach was rubbish. We've been terrible at set piece coaches for years. He's just left. Uh, Steve McLaren, obviously he's been in football for a long time, but is he really forward thinking and like an exciting name anymore? I don't think so personally. Um, and Mitchell van der Gaag, I'll be honest, I don't really know that much about. And if someone said to me, you could swap Mitchell van der Gaag for Gary O'Neill, who's been doing well at Wolves, I would, I would take that in a heartbeat. So this story is more Manchester United looking at bolstering and improving their coaching team, not swapping Eric Ten Hag for Gary O'Neill. So that has to be made very clear because I've seen a lot of people on Twitter getting really upset this morning saying, you know, how the hell are Man United going to bring in Gary O'Neill as the manager? It's a disgrace and all the rest of it. That's not what's going to happen and that's not what's being explored. So don't worry about that. Um, that's part of why this channel is here to try and, you know, to try and look through all of the news and bring you actually actual the truth because a lot of it is just people getting scared and scaremongering um but let me know what you guys think would you like to see gary o'neill join the manchester united coaching setup for me i think it would be a great addition i think he's been done a really good job at uh, wolves so yeah I, I would definitely do that um but obviously you guys can let me know in the comment section what you think as well uh the final story we've got for you today is an update on malasia the mystery man who seems to have disappeared off the face of the earth so apparently um He's had a damaged cartilage men meniscus in his knee. I'm not a doctor, so that didn't read off very well, but he's had a problem with his knee uh, and apparently he spent a lot of time in Netherlands after having to have surgery. He is now back at Carrington. He is training uh, or not training. He's re you know rehabilitating himself, trying to get better, but there's no hope for him this season, apparently. Apparently he's now working towards being back for the start of next season, which actually isn't that long away if you think about it the season starts in august so i mean what's that april may june july it's about four months away until the new premier league season starts so we won't see malasia this season uh 100 he's he's out he's not going to come back but he will be back in time for the start of the next premier league season but as i said earlier on in the show man united are targeting a new left back now yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. Maybe Luke Shaw is going to be moved on. Maybe Luke Shaw will play as a left-sided centre-back. I don't know what's going to happen, but I think we are desperate for a new left-back because that's been a massive issue this season, hasn't it? We've had Lindelof play there. We've had Amrabat play there. Um, it's been a complete mess. So I, I, I definitely endorse a new left-back coming in this summer. Uh, that's everything that we had planned for the show this morning, guys. If you have enjoyed it, please do smash a like, leave a comment, subscribe on your way out. This has been Daily Red Devil. Thank you very much for watching today. I'll speak to you all a bit later.